Welcome back to the 2020 Summer Sock Knitting Cowl from Be Hooked. In this third and final tutorial, we'll work through the afterthought heel and put the finishing touches on our sock. If you haven't seen videos one and two yet, you'll need to jump back and finish those first before getting into this one. Don't forget the pattern and all of the cowl details can be found at behooked.com slash K-A-L. Also, don't forget to use hashtag BeHookedSockCal on Instagram to share a progress photo or two. I'll be contacting one person totally at random via Instagram messages sometime next week to receive a BeHooked shop item of their choice, just as a little token of saying thank you for participating. Okay, last week you accomplished a lot. You added waist yarn to place the afterthought heel, you worked the leg ribbing pattern, and the bind off. So at this point, it looks almost like a functional sock. The time has finally come to knit the heel. First things first, we need to remove the waist yarn placeholder stitches, but before we can do that, we need to secure the stitches so the sock doesn't unravel. We'll do that by feeding the needles back on the sock. So with the waist yarn facing up and the toe closest to you, Find the first stitch of the sock yarn that sits just below the first stitch of the waist yarn. This is why we used a contrast color. Insert one of the needles through the right leg of that stitch or left leg for left-handed knitters. Then insert the needle under that same leg of the next stitch. and the stitch after that. You wanna be really careful not to skip any stitches. If you find yourself going a little cross-eyed, just make sure you're in a well-lit room. And remember, you're just feeding every other loop on the needle. It'll be a little snug as you work this. That's totally fine, just work through it. Now before moving on, refer back to your pattern to double check the number of stitches you have in your heel. It'll be different for each size, so that's why you need to refer to that pattern. And make sure you have that many loops on your needle and you're good to go. Next, do the same thing along the top edge. Like before, find the first stitch sitting on the top of the waist yarn. Insert your needle under the right leg. Again, left leg for lefties and continue catching each stitch on the needle. And of course, don't forget when you get to that last stitch, do a quick stitch count to make sure you didn't accidentally skip a stitch or two. If you did, you'll have an unravel situation on your hands and that won't be good. Now with both of the needles as they are and your stitch count is on point, the waist yarn can be safely removed. To make this process a little easier, I like to trim the tail really short on one side and then just use a yarn needle to pick the stitches out. You'll need to pick them out along this entire row first before you can really pull on it and they'll rip out nicely. I'm not gonna lie, this part is a little tedious and it takes some time. All right, with the waist yarn gone, your sock will look something like this. 
Now rotate it and set yourself up to start knitting. Now this junction is always a little finicky and you really might have to play with this a little to get it right. The goal is to pick up four additional stitches in this space because if you were to leave it as it is, you'd have a hole on each side of your sock. So find the row directly off the cord and insert the free needle into that stitch or one of those stitches. There's really not an exact science here. And we need to join our yarn again because we don't have any at this point. So loop the yarn so you have about an eight inch tail and then place that on the needle and pull it through that stitch. That's the first of four and we need to do that three more times. Find your next stitch placement, insert the needle, loop the working yarn around and pull it through. This is how you work a pick up and knit by the way. So keep going to pick up the remaining two loops. Then sort of pull up on it and make sure there aren't any large or really noticeable holes. If there are, you can easily just slide your needle out and start over again. But any small holes we can take care of later when we weave in this end. The next step is to knit all of the stitches from needle one. Now on this side of the sock, we also need to pick up four stitches in this gap, play around with it, pick up and knit just like you did before. Then you'll knit all the stitches on needle two. So that wraps up the first round of the heel. Next, we need to decrease just a bit to make up for those additional stitches we picked up in the corners. So set yourself up, and the decrease we'll use here is the knit two together. So to do that, you'll insert the needle through the next two stitches, knitwise, and then just knit them as one. Super simple. Then knit the remaining stitches on this needle. Now we'll repeat the same thing for the other needle. Knit two together and knit the remaining stitches on the needle. Okay, so far we knit the first stitch, then knit two together, decrease, and knit the remaining stitches on both of the needles. Now we're gonna work that same pattern on needle one and needle two one more time. When you're done, each needle will have two fewer stitches and you wanna just double check that before moving on to the next part. Now you get a little break here because the next three rounds are really simple. You're just going to knit all the stitches on both needles. All right, we're moving on now to the heel decrease pattern. And to be honest, it's pretty simple to memorize. There are two rounds, a decrease round and a knit round. Round one is the decrease round. You'll knit the first stitch and then go ahead and place a stitch marker here just to help you keep track of things. And here's a new decrease for you, but don't worry, it's really simple too. It's called the slip slip knit or abbreviated SSK. So to work that, you'll slip the next stitch as if to knit, then slip the next stitch as if to knit, and then insert your other needle through both of those so that you can knit them together through the back loop. Then 
Then knit to the last three stitches on this needle. Knit two together, just like you saw earlier. And finally, knit the last stitch. Then repeat the same thing on the next needle to finish this round. Knit the first stitch, slip, slip, knit, knit to the last three stitches, knit two together, and knit the last stitch. Now round two of the heel is really simple. You'll knit every stitch on both needles. So that's it, that's the heel decrease pattern. Rounds one and two make up the repeat for the heel and you wanna continue with this repeat until you have the right number of stitches remaining on each of your needles. It's different for every size, so again, refer to your pattern for that specific number. And this is what your heel will look like when that happens, nearly identical to the toe. Cut the working yarn leaving about an eight inch tail and thread that on your darning needle. We're gonna close up the opening here with something called the Kitchener stitch. Another technique you'll find in sock patterns, but it's incredibly useful in other scenarios too. When we're done, it'll look like this hole was never there. It's a true invisible seam, and it's a really valuable skill for you to know. The Kitchener stitch is a four step process. First, insert the needle in the first stitch on the front needle knitwise, feed it through, and slide it off. Then, working on the same needle, insert your yarn needle purl-wise, but this time keep the loop on the needle. Then jump to the back needle. Insert the yarn needle purl-wise and slide it off. And finally, on the back needle again, insert your needle knitwise and keep the loop on the needle. And repeat. I usually say this in my head as I'm working the Kitchener stitch so I don't forget what I'm supposed to be doing. Knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on. It may even be helpful to write that down and you can just read it as you go. This is one of those steps where you really wanna pay attention, so try to tackle this step when you have a few minutes to yourself and you're in a well-lit room. Also, as you pull the tail, try to match the tension in the rest of the sock so the grafted stitches match. And here you have it. Looks a lot like what we saw for Judy's magic cast on, huh? All right, we just have one more step to finish this sock, weaving in the ends. Again, this is one of those steps you really wanna take your time on because there's nothing worse than having a tail poke through when you're wearing them. Let's deal with this end first. Poke the needle through to the inside and then turn it inside out. Of course, you wanna weave them in on the inside of the sock. Then run the needle under a row of purl bumps in several directions. The more you weave it in, 
the more likely it'll stay put. This is also a really great opportunity to close up any noticeable holes from the heel junction. That's the trend for weaving in the ends. You'll have an end on each side of the heel, the toe, and one up at the top. Now this one at the top here is a little different because there's a jog, right? So to fix that, just run the needle under the stitch next to the jog and back through to the inside. You can even loop it around a couple times if you want to, to secure it, and then weave it in as usual. Putting a handmade sock on for the first time is the best feeling ever. So definitely don't skip this step before repeating all of these steps for the second sock. You now have all the resources you need to finish this cowl and there's no deadline, so work at your own pace. The goal here is for you to finish your first pair of socks before the end of summer so you can enjoy them this fall. Now, if I can ask one favor of you, it would be this. If you enjoyed this cowl and you wanna do it again next summer with a different pattern, a different sock, please either like this video or even better, tell me in the comments. I'm here to inspire and serve you, so please do let me know how I can do that. Lastly, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please, please consider doing so. It's a simple little gesture that doesn't cost a thing, and it helps me in more ways than you know. Thank you so much for that, and I'll see you in the next one.